Welcome boys and girls, welcome, welcome, welcome to another fine edition of Team Fortress.tv and our continued coverage of ETF 12 Season 41, powered and sponsored by Copenhagen Games. The big winner will get some fat prize pool tickets going in and the, the, the winners may be here tonight, possibly beta. I don't know, let's go through the teams and let's go through our little staff. We've got beta obviously on the code class and we have we too controlling all the buttons, pressing all the knobs and dials, and yeah, beat it. It should be an interesting game tonight. I'm not going to say it's good, but it's going to be interesting. It, it, there's going to be some, some shake-ups for sure, like because we've got Witness Gaming, and no, it's not that Witness Gaming, it's the new Witness Gaming, uh, formerly known as Evil Guys. Like Witness Gaming actually just imploded, went into a black hole, never to be seen again, and Witness Gaming just picked up Evil Guys, so the EG brand has died in TF2 once again. And we are blessed with another Witness Gaming, and it is uh, one of the absolute top teams, if not the top team. So Witness Gaming, you know, when Witness sees uh, a talent roster is open, he just pounces on it. And if these guys can, can win the tournament or this uh, season, then they can get to the opening game for free anyway. So that's mm. probably where they want to end up anyway, right? Yeah, correct. It's all about that land usually topping off and capping uh, the ETF 12 season after. But uh, on the other side, speaking of like little leapfrogging from place to place, Stevie Wonder's aim school. Oh boy, students have been left leaving left, right, and centre. Beta. We have three roster shakeups on the roster. Your boy Yak has managed to just claw three players in for this match, his rematch against Lucas Stank, but we'll get into the history in a little second, but the little roster changes tonight will be Scar and T-Ram will be play replacing Charlie and I believe it was Troy on the Soldiers and we've got Swee replacing Iusti on Scout, and I mean right off the bat, Beta, downgrade, upgrade, sidegrade, what, what are you thinking? I like with this kind of a roster shakeup, it's always going to be like kind of a downgrade almost no matter who you get, Right, like, like this is unless like the players are just clearly like miles and miles ahead of them. So, like, I, I think it's gonna be very chaotic and, and probably not <laughs> that good for for Stevie Wonder's aim school. But like, I will say, Ska has, was very good last season, and uh, like Tim is also a fine soldier. And then the last time Sui played, he was also very good. So it's just a matter of like, are they still good? Does the context matter as much? Like, like is Sui still good? Because he didn't play last season, I don't think. Uh, like, he had a very strong season a couple of seasons ago, but it's very hard to tell where they're going to be at and how well these teams gel together. Sometimes you do just make a new roster and things just click and it works out really well for you, but only time will tell. And it almost probably doesn't matter because they're up against the absolute top team in ETF 12 this season. And... They're probably going to get their ass whooped almost no matter what they did. Yeah, it's people forget these aspects of an ETF 12 season. It's not a race, it's a marathon. And a lot of the challenge can just be managing your team, managing expectations and hot-headed personalities and just getting six people into the same server every night or so just to start practicing and getting into your official games and... It is a task, and I can only give commiserations to Yak to actually find the manpower to get these people in and carry on the season. A lot of people, I'm not pointing fingers, but a lot of people would just kind of crumble and give up and just fold instead. Yeah, you definitely got to give some props for just not taking the easy way out. Keeping it together, moving on, seeing what they can do. Like... Uh, and then obviously they just get thrown into the fire immediately in this yeah. gaming. <laughs> it, it, just... is, it is a very David and Goliath matchup, and it's a matchup we've actually seen a bit before. Yak and uh, this team have a bit of beef, a bit of history. Maybe it's all in good fun, but they like a bit of trash talk, I would, is probably the lightest way I can put it. And we're actually going to take a real trip down memory lane tonight, because our maps tonight are going to be Snake Water and Granary, and I think it was Granary was the spicy one from last season, so... Yeah, oh, that, was, that was the big air pipe one, <laughs> where Lucas just like absolutely piped the crap out of him because Yak jumped in because Yak always jumps in, and then I mean, he just Yak talked. was having a strong suit throughout the game though. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna balance this sort of charade out. Uh, the clips don't always tell the truth. That was a a good game for Yak and his boys back in the day, but he's he's really playing the 
game on hard difficulty mode going into this match. But I mean, it, yeah, do I even ask you for a prediction? Is it at this point, or should I ask for a time instead? Beat. Uh, I'm going to go through the rosters, and then people will probably get why we think Win's going to win because we have got Domo on medic, been like a great medic for a really long time. Then we got Lucas, aka Base God, on demo man, probably the best demo man in Europe for quite a while. Then we got Demul. Bit of a, of a break he's had from Prem for a while, but a very, very strong soldier. Poppy, best pocket soldier in Europe. Tomas, best scout in Europe. And then Classy, a very good scout. Been a while since he's played uh, scout in Prem. He was on medic for quite a bit and then had a bit of a break as well. And now he's back on scout. So probably Classy is the biggest question mark. And then maybe Demul as well, you could say. Like those are the two players that have been kind of slotted in or have been... Uh, chained in classes but like i was always a big fan of classy i thought he was a really fantastic scout but you mm -hmm. know maybe he's lost a step so that's kind of the thing that i'm going to be looking for like how is classy playing is he just being like out dm by some other scouts you you never know these things and like is the mood just playing like an idiot or is he like actually playing really well within the team so, mm. so these are the things that i'm going to be looking for like i think they're going to win just fine and actually also one thing i will notice like we had the Iron Bomber get nerfed to be in line with, <laughs> with the stock pipes this season. Oh, so, I see. All, GG, yeah, yeah. get Lucas out of here. This yeah, man is not just good because of Iron Bomby, right? That's the question. But also, we're on Granary, and if people still show up to that mid, rocking the Iron Bomber instead of the objectively better stock weapon, like I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna flip my absolute desk if people still don't roll out with that because it is so good for spamming over those crates on mid like i don't see why you wouldn't do it especially now all right well just to remind the boys and girls at home about the stevie wonders aim score lineup we'll just quickly go through them it will be fast on medic still yak is going to be that dead man as always scar and TRAM are your two new soldiers. Valnu is still kicking on the scout, and Swee will be that other scout partner. But let's go through some like, little comparisons. Bring out the stats for a change. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, Beta. There's not too many stats we can pick out here because between roster shakeups and like witness gamings and changing of like paint jobs and all that. So the ones we thought was the most interesting and we've already touched upon, it's the Lucas versus Yak matchup. The Demoman v Demoman. A tale as all the time. Yeah, will the Yak bombs work is the real question. So Yak, he tends to jump in a lot. And if you're not ready for it, he will absolutely destroy your team. But if you are ready for it, he will very often look like a fool. And you can kind of see it in the deaths per map where he has like five extra deaths. And that is mostly a result of him just jumping in like very aggressively. But mm. like, I mean, they both have very strong like damage per minutes and damage statement, that kind of shot. Actually, they have a bunch of air shots per map. Usually, Demo Man is pretty low in that regard. But yeah, obviously, Lucas has better stats. I don't think that's a surprise. He plays on a better team. He pretty much always has. And he's also a better player. But it's all going to be about whether or not the Yak Bombs work in my book. And I, I don't suspect they will. <laughs> Uh, I do want to talk about as well is the whole David and Goliath sort of psychology. There's a lot of things that go off in the heads of these players, Beta, that uh, not everybody really thinks about. Now, when you play in a game when you've got like nothing on the line, no expectations and whatnot, and then when you're considered the best team, you've got all these expectations on, what usually happens to these players? Do they like rise up a lot of the time, or is it does that kind of pressure ever get to them? I mean, we just saw it get to the old Witness game. <laughs> So pressure can get to you in a lot of different ways. And yeah, we, we've seen Yak's team almost implode before. So I, I'm not going to write that off. I, I think they, they know that they're the underdogs here. So I don't think they're going to take any kind of loss uh, very hard. It's not going to be something that they absolutely expect to do. So I, I'm not too worried about it. I, I think the first official is always like a given. Like people just want to... Just look at how, how the, the lay of the land is and see how everything feels. So, not, not too worried about it. The, the first match is always free, right? First match is always free. But I feel like a, a lot of Stevie Wonder's aim school, they started off very high going into the season. They were like very, uh, being you know impressive. Again, obviously, that little draw against the older uh, Witness Gaming. Uh, lineup as well was just really putting kind of shocking effects and ripples through the season and now since then they've kind of maybe thought 
bit too highly of their aspirations, and now that's why you got some people leaving because of that little loss with uh, word that is is doof. But I don't know. Do you think uh, maybe this whole just playing some regular chaotic TF2 and just going, you know, just going, giving it your best shot is probably the best mindset they could have taken going into a match like this. Um, like witness gaming have shown that they're really good at absorbing aggression. So maybe that is not the play. Like. I'm finding it very hard, but it, it might just be the best thing. I, I would definitely try to do a bunch of like chaos plays and just throwing players in, do, doing wraparounds, going for backup plays, that kind of stuff to just really put the pressure on and see how they handle it. But if that kind of stuff fails, I think they should just play it by ear and, and do their best to maybe pick up people that go in very aggressively. Because when you have some of these uh, scout mains that are very... I confident like I expect Tomas to, to run in kind of stupidly and win DM fights anyway because he's really good but you can absolutely just play into that and just ho let him do that and maybe try to team up on him if he overextends and like Dumoul is obviously a roamer so like he's probably gonna be in forward and, and just punish that like you would in any other normal match where like they're down a soldier so I think they just need to be adaptable Play it a bit by ear. Like come in with a game plan. Obviously, I would probably go with the with the chaos game plan and like mm. very like supercharged aggression, which is kind of their bread and butter. Mm. Like I, I don't think you should change your playstyle completely based on how good your opponents are. I think you just do what you're comfortable with, and then if that's not working, then you adapt. And like being adaptable is very important, but also just being comfortable yourself is also like equally important. So. Mm. Like, it's all about find, finding that balance between what you like and what's working. Now, you know, there's been so a couple of old boomers. We've seen them fair TF2 match or two, but was there any sort of ones in history that stick out to you where, you know, you had these sort of David and Goliath matchups? And, you know, is there anything they could probably steal from those sort of matches in time like, and like plays or maybe even strategies or kind of inspiration? Or do you think this is not even one for the history books? All right, so, so obviously the first thing I think of is Witness Gaming this season that, that lost to, to Force Kings, right? Like, that was a really strong example. And then I'm also thinking of, like, back in the American League in ESEA where I think it was, like, Area 51 or something that beat... Oh, my. Like, yeah, like, some very strong team on, on Gravel Pit where they used, like, a bunch of spy plays. So it's, like, being weird with the off-classes. And, like, I also remember teams losing on Snakewater due to like lower ranked teams actually doing things like using banners and like using kind of weird strategies or at the very least non-standard strategies to kind of just outplay them because mm. sometimes these uh, very strong teams they don't really go into it with the mindset that they are the ones that are going to have to adapt so like if they just go for these very non-standard things where they just try to out dm them then they're actually kind of susceptible to like uh, being abused themselves. I also remember Lego like beating seven on Reckoner, mm. right? Where like Lego, they, they got a, a, an early round on them and then they just had like some really strong holds uh, ready for them and some, some weird off classes and some banner plays and they actually managed to beat seven or crowns or whatever they were called at the time. And like it was a big upset and, and I think that kind of play can absolutely work out, but we're, we're going to have to see how the map actually evolves to give any proper examples of like what would actually work i think i think being adaptable is, is my key for this all right we're going to be getting started underway very soon but before that happens beta i'm going to make you look like a genius are you going to take the three three b prediction the one that everybody's predicting and putting their money on are you going to go against the grain are you going to put your money behind stevie wonder's aim score who's winning this game look obviously winning this game is winning but i i think if we're going to make it interesting, I think we should uh, try to predict how many rounds Stevie Wonder's aim scores are going to get. And, well, you know, I'll, I'll go first. I'll be, I'll be a sport. And I'm going <laughs> to say... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they get zero. They get zero rounds. That's, that's going to be my, my bold prediction. Do, do you think they're going to get one? I... Yeah, I think uh, we might have to delve even deeper, Beta. I think we need to start p predicting a time that the 5-0s are going to happen. Wow! <laughs> but 
I can see I can see them digging their heels a bit over on Sneakwater, so I'm going to say it's going to be hard. I think it's still going to come down to the 5-0, but it will probably be around that 25 mark. Like, if we're going to see a round thrown, I will say I, I think Granary is, is the obvious pick. Yes. Granary mid is very volatile, and it is a map where you can famously just roll from mid to last and like very quickly and just take it with an uber ad. And there's very little the opponent can do about it if they, they have a bad enough mid. So that that's absolutely where I would look to see them like lose rounds on Witness Gaming if it's going to happen. So, you know, they, they could get two rounds in there. and just Also, I remember Lucas not having the best games on, on Granary, like historically. Um, against the Axe team was definitely an outlier. He had a very good one last time around they played, but... In general, I'd say Lucas seems to not be that fond of Granary. Uh, hmm. Or maybe I'm just making things up. All right. And, uh, well, let's. I'm rooting. I mean, I, I know I put down the, the little prediction mark on Witness Game, but I'm rooting for Stevie Wonder's aim school here. You know, everyone likes an underdog story. And uh, I think this team is just begging for a win between, obviously, their points from that other Witness Gaming brand going away just because of the nature of the walls and whatnot and also now if they lose any more players they're out of the season the hijack rule will, will kick in so yeah you know morale up stevie wonder school i'm with you yeah if you don't know what the, the hijack rule is it states that if a team changes more than three players so if they change four players then it's a high team hijack and your team gets disqualified and currently yak's team they have three new players so one more player mm. leaves yeah you should Usually that rule is there to kind of stop good players just kind of getting onto a team or something like just made playoff or some sort of weird ruling, but uh, who knows, maybe some admin magic could be sprayed spare for Yak if it came down to it. Anywho, we are starting our match in this ETF to our week four game of Witness Gaming EU versus Stevie Wonder's Aim School, sponsored by Copenhagen Games. We're going into it. Your boy Yak and your boy Lucas are going to start the Goliath match over on this Snakewater middle. So far, I'm seeing nothing. No uh, initial jumps coming out from any of these soldiers, and this is how usually a lot of these middles go. They just kind of feel each other out. Pappy's going to be the first one to bomb in, but he's going for territory, not so much players, as they will send the first wave of players to go acro across and try and deal with Stevie Wonder's, uh, I mean, uh, Witness Gaming's lineup, but they just defend it very, very just like plainly. Faust will go down, and it will be a drop on the stats, but that boy was dying no matter what. Yeah, and Domo did the smart thing and died really early on. He's actually the only person to die, but he got picked off really early on. And, like, they tried to get out there with Faust and everyone else that were alive. Like, in this kind of situation, you kind of <laughs> need to go out there. All right. Lucas Wick gets uh, the nice little pick there. They're going to cap out second. So Domo, he, he's going to have the advantage. He could go crits. This is a pretty obvious crit situation. He actually decides not to go for it. But, yeah, it was a very good job of, uh, of Witness Gaming here to just go in get the, uh, the aggression in to make sure that no one could escape with their medic there because that is the situation where you actually kind of win the mid back as the losing team even though you lose mid. Sweeze on sniper, he's a very proficient sniper, he really likes to play it. Sending on gets spammed out, so that's a very good start. That means they get to send in a soldier. Demo is pretty hurt though, so it might be Poppy that decides to go for it. Yeah, just gonna... <laughs> okay. He went for the soldier instead, actually just hit some oh, really nice... Pipes! Pipes oh. the drop on Faust! Oh, the roller! Lucas Stank hits the Iron Bomber. It doesn't matter how little the, the uh, little hitboxes are, it will find its target. Swee's trying to go for a hero play, but he can't find the stinking medic. So now uh, with this huge blunder coming out, they're going to push in from last, go from lower. There's no sentry gun to deal with. The demo man is actually getting pummeled in the respawn queue. They've got players on point and... Despite the uh, excellent sniper play, it will go to the Witness Gaming team. Let's hope this doesn't go to Faust's head, because this is the kind of stuff that can really demoralize you as a medic. Like dropping in that kind of fashion, it's very, very annoying for you. And, you know, it's a new team and everything, so things might get really cluttered and frustrated if people lose hope. But uh, let's hope that's just a one-off uh, little misstep and we're in for some really solid TF2 after this. but. 
I'm taking away on this second bit here, turn the taps. All right, it's fine. You know, warm up, warm up mid, warm up round. We're going into it now. This is the where the real game started. The adaptation will begin. The soldiers start jumping in, and they're going for the big boy bombs. They get Domo again, and maybe they can maybe get some bonus kills this time. They're getting some decent damage, but I don't see anybody really being cleaned up here. Demol is just striking so much harder and just faster compared to the other soldiers on the Stevie Wonder's aim school, finishing a few kills off. Carl will be um, they kind of missing somewhere in all this lineup ends yep there he is he's actually trying to back out almost gets directed but we'll be back to the world of living probably going to get a sentry gun up for his team on this last point but it's a clean round um well, clean mid mostly for witness gaming apart from that little medic death yeah it's the second time the double soldier bomb has gotten the medic so like we definitely want to see domo try to adapt and see if he can figure out a way to stay safe from that because that would throw a spanner in the works but of course they are winning the mid so it's not the biggest deal like getting on to the enemy's second here with the even ubers that's completely fine you take that mid every time if you <laughs> if it's a solid mid so maybe they don't actually need to change anything but it should be interesting to see if there's going to be a way here for steve wonder's aim school to actually follow it up so he's on sniper again sentry gun has gone up this is the the very box standard, uh, I, I always call it the seven hole because they kind of standardized this whole sentry thing spot with, the, with off classes and everything. But we'll see how they decide to, to try and break this. They obviously tried to spam out the sentry last time. It actually worked out. Demul kind of posed up here, looking like he wants to jump in, but decides not to go for it just yet. Sentry is still only level two, so that makes it a lot more spammable. Like those, those extra 36 HP actually makes a difference. Yeah, you'd think uh, Demo and Papi would kind of link up to spam out that sentry gun. I mean, it went so swimmingly last time, but you now Demo's hell bent on just going for some little skirmish against the sniper, against this soldier lineup. They actually hold a bit closer over on Stevie Wonder's <laughs> aim score, and he will trade, you know, like any good yeah. Roma will, but it's just not the pick he was wanted. It's just going to put more delay in time, and it's going to make my 25 minutes slow down here. I mean, if I got floated by a sentry gun like that, I'd be super happy with trading. That's usually not a situation where you get any kills. So I think he's pretty happy about it. I was kind of expecting him to go sniper. The mole is a very Ooh, Domo, proficient sniper. Domo. Oh my god, that's so close. He yep. doesn't pop. What a man. What a legend. He just sat balls of steel. The rollers, though. Oh, oh it's a danger field, minefield for Domo. And they're just going to back out. They're going to get his little kind of injured ass out to the health pack and they're going to play it cool. Tomas does go down to all the pressure instead. but Yeah, actually really poor control of lobby there. Soda jumps and <laughs> lands on the sticky trap. Uh, a bit unfortunate. I don't know how Lucas knew that. Uh, gotta go for a little talk. But yeah, there's actually really poor lobby control there. Tomas has gone spy it looks like. Is he? Yeah, he's actually making his way in there. Just trotting in. And again, oh my god. Faust so weak, gets piped there, but he does have uh, dispenser armor. Dispenser armor not working there, uh, surprisingly. Oh, he's going to sap the sentry gun. Next level play coming out from Tomas. Goes for the face stab, doesn't quite get it, but I mean, it will open up these soldiers to jump on Faust, and because that sentry gun defense oh, isn't up, there, it's. Oh, <laughs> sweet! What he's a got snipe. it covered, baby! He doesn't need to worry about things. Lucas has got the bottle out. He's crits uh, somebody in the face. I do kind of wonder how that's even happening because there's no random crits on this server. Lucas, he dives deeper into the belly of the beast, will go down, but there was a lot of chaos there, Peter. And a lot of kind of interesting plays going down. Yes, yeah, we really coming in clutch there. Sort of jumps in behind. That's going to be a big distraction. Here comes the as well. Takes down the demo man. And this is just a crunch. Really nice coordination here. Medic gonna try to get out but it is just not even close soldier can he salvage this gets on to domo but domo a little bit too healthy there not enough rockets in the tank there blind is going to be the only one alive and that was a greatly executed second retake here coming in for witness gaming they're going to go in on to last Varnu unable to take on the 5v1 uh can't really blame him there that's going to be two to zero but uh, actually some some pretty decent play coming out here from steve wonder's aim school like they're not getting completely trounced mm. Mm. Yeah, like they actually put on some really good pressure in lobby there. They almost just exposed them because Domo was just taking damage. And they, if there had been a bit more aggression, he actually would have been forced to pop or drop there. And that's not good. That's not what you want to do. You don't want to let your medic just get stuck in lobby like that. 
It just looks very cold and calculated and very well synced coming out from Witness Gaming. It's a treat to see, but you do have the players coming out from Stevie Wonder's aim score. That sweet snipe. Mwah. But uh, Pappy, he's just a force to be reckoned with. He uh, cuts down certain parts of the map and just make sure that nobody can really play or go to the places they want to go to and he will go down but Domo is actually alive now and they could convert this into a good round with Faust going down. Yeah he played very passively down there. Oh my god Sweet's getting piped. Oh <laughs> the roller. Okay, so right. disgusting. Oh my man. He's just uh, it doesn't matter. You have to probably make the hitboxes not exist for uh, Lucas to not hit these pipes. Yeah, like, apparently the Iron Bomber is still good if your name is Lucas. Like, I don't know, like, he just kind of shot those pipes into nothing. Just, ooh, ooh, classic ooh, goes down there. Sniper so plays. And uh, he's still alive, will go down, but, uh, yeah, kind of takes the wind out of the sails ever so slightly for Witness Gaming EU. They're going to leave Tomas on second, he's going to cap that out while they set up in lobby, and they've got the full uber charge, but they can kind of take the time with it if they really want to, you know, make sure yeah. they've been sorted, take kind out of the, the sentry gun. The problem here is that you will have, like, double scouts onto the point, is usually how you punish teams when you have uber advantage, because they can just retreat into spawn, but right now they don't really have the opportunity to pressure point that much. They only have one scout to do it, so the super doesn't get a whole lot, like, they've kind of taken space on the the last point here, but that's all they've managed to get so far, and Moose going to be the first one to go down. Poppy jumps in very aggressively. He gets taken down as well. Now Thomas gets onto the point. Oh, oh man. Barely enough there, but I really, that felt so holdable for aim school. Yeah, they were doing really well. It was just that last second uh, point play that they couldn't really clear and deal with, and it felt like the, the priority targeting from Witness Gaming EU was just awful. I don't think anybody was shooting at anyone, any of the same targets, and they were just doing a good job kiting over on Stevie Wonder's aim score. Yeah, and eventually they just got pushed too far away from the point, and they got capped. So, great execution there by Tomas. Showing his class. Uh, Soldier's in the in there, and oh my god, Poppy actually survives. That's really important as uh, he was just exchanging, <laughs> basically trading, but not going to be quite enough. Bonu very aggressively just walks across the point, gets a lot of work done. It's a three on three situation here, and it's double scout medic right now for Steven Wonder's aim school, and that's a very powerful combo. Gonna just chew up Poppy. He had no chance whatsoever. So Lucas. And don't worry, they're just going to go back to last here. They're probably going to try and put up some fight here on second. But they, they need a bit of uh, of help before they fully commit to it. Just goes to show the power of the scouts in these uh, last seconds of the fight. Oh, the scouts are back though, and they're here to take it on second. They will block it with Uber, and it doesn't mean Stevie Wonder's aim score can't really cap while this is going off. And they bring in the big gun. Lucas Stank will kind of commit in this post-Uber, forcing them out of that second point, and... Uh, that's a play you don't see too a brave play you don't see too often from teams nowadays. But Witness Gaming are just going with the correct and uh, decision every time, despite how scary it is. Yeah, indeed, like very calm and collected. They're just making sure that they're not giving up anything for free. They have the slightest of advantage. This is even. So now it's just a matter of how will these teams try to break this stalemate. Like, I think Scar is pretty fond of actually going for for banners, so I would kind of like to see him just suicide in here at some point and go for a banner play, because Snakewater is a play where you can absolutely do this, and like this is one of those maps where I remember an earlier match where there was a big upset, and one of the ways it was done was like I think it was like a soonest or something that went for for a banner on Snakewater, or it might even have been Scar. I can't remember. But it looks like uh, they're going to try and send a scout through aggressively <laughs> sweet. He's going to get shot down here, but it is actually two picks that ends up going in, in favor here of Witness Gaming. So now it's their turn to go in. And, yeah, Dubul, he is in. See what he can do. He's in the skybox. Definitely distracting a whole bunch, but is this going to be enough? Yeah, they do actually get a pick off of it. So continuously one man up here for Witness Gaming. Class is about to come in oh, behind no. the medic. That's going to be the force. Really nice pressure. Yeah, it's just really, really s difficult when you're losing Ooh, uh, bodies and heads on the field. You can't hold all of these doors. Every person is, in, you know, important in these little holes. So when you lose one, there is a weakened area. They do expose it. Pappy is doing a wonderful job. Just, oh my god! Oh my 
<laughs> good See god, it. I think they were more in the danger in the air than they are on the ground. Sweet Jesus, they got demolished by Witness Gaming. Their collective, everybody was getting in their shot. Well, Poppy's good with the big flank as well. Actually, just barely missed the demo there, unfortunately for him. Bond is actually in behind, gets the medic. Nice pick. Massive. There. Good salvage. That was a really bad situation, and now just really bad. So gonna be oh they want to they keep going they want to uh, commit in they've got the um a bit of a body advantage and they know they've got those respawners on their side they Poppy's going for of... the medic uh, spawn camp by the way mm. oh. he's, he's not quite finding the picks that he wants now he's on the low ground he hasn't really got anything to play off here so he's gonna have to get thinking and Pappy's just gonna start back capping probably just getting a health kit baiting some people behind just just to delve deeper into things and bring back more players just be an annoying little nuisance and i mean credit to him he's brought back three bodies from the mid area they could maybe think about recommitting in but no they want to set up on uh set up on second instead but pappy's still in the back yeah. line and here. he was on the the paint train right no, no, I think he was just on the regular, was he? Uh, well, oh my god, it did. Despite lo losing Pap, uh, not having Pappy in the fight, they have get beaten by the wall, and Pappy's closing in behind them. He's got them caught in kitchen and can't really uh, there's, get out. None of Stevie Wonder's aim score. They're entering the bunker, and the bunker is being collapsed in upon, and they will pretty much wipe here over on Stevie Wonder's aim score. Oh no, Scar went spying. They just saw him walk out of spawn. That, that's not how spy works. <laughs> <laughs> not how you want to play it. Faust is in spawn, not going to peek his head out. That's good. And it's just Yak right now playing forward, and he might oh, no. get caught out. Oh, Happy yeah. Though. It's a good, fortunate set of pipes there. Oh, uh, Tomas trying to commit for the Yak kill, and uh, yeah, kind of almost a little bait play. Demo trying to make waves happen in the lobby. He's going to go down as well. That's three players down for Witness Gaming EU, and I think uh, Stevie Wonder's aim score a little shocked here. They start moving into second. They don't even need to cap it because it hasn't been capped off yet. They're pushing in. They've used the Uber over on Domo and company, but it's really more just a salvaging, picking up the pieces kind of Uber. They can only really find Faust. That is the wonder pick, but Chaos could ensure here if they can get on top of this medic before the respawn is uh, back for uh, Witness Gaming EU, but it's all fine. Domo's alive, and the important playmaking pieces still can go to second. Yeah, they just win these fights. It's so, so solid. Sui is still behind. He might just sneak up on them. Like, I, they should know that he's behind. And, yeah. <laughs> like, Domo's just... Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You can see Domo's, like, literally had his back turned to the front of <laughs> the map. Like, he was just not worried about people coming from there. Instead, they're going to try and see if they can chase down Sweet. He's uh, really far back, and there you go. <laughs> Lucas, uh, putting the sticky trap near the, uh, the other health pack, knowing that that's the only place Sweet can be annoying and hoovering up all the health on the map. So, with a scout down, a three-body, and an uber advantage, we're going in. We're going on right on top of the medic. He can't get through the respawn door. He's definitely going to go down. No heals for Stevie Wonder's aim school. No backup plan either. They just have to start picking off players one by one. They do have a sentry gun in a weird spot that maybe might catch them off guard, but it's already been found and cleaned up. The respawners do come back. Scar gets a pick onto Pappy. Leadership gone in this push. The scouts are just too strong, though. The DM is too strong for them. This Dickies have been popped. The another soldier's come back from the respawn, and he's just trying to lay down the line. He will get a scout, though. The, oh my the God, Yak is holding on to this for so long. Domo's got the uh, the melee out. Everybody's got their melee weapon out. It's a fourth round on the board. That was so many crunchy rockets out of two, and it just didn't matter. He hit all the shots. It was very impressive. But at the end of the day, it was just too much there. Like, very solid push out of Witness Gaming. They just took left side, and that sentry gun actually bought a lot of time. Like, they just prevented them from actually going near the point for a while. So the sentry gun was very, very good for Steven Wonder's aim school, but they lost too many players beforehand, and eventually they just got edged out. And yeah, the DM was too strong. The heels came in clutch. And despite their good rockets, it didn't work out. Scott very close by, but he gets floated so hard by this guy. Poor guy. Luckily, he's got pushed uh, back into a safe place, and Domo will go down, so they might uh, win the war. Maybe not the battle. It depends how much skirmishing power they got. They've got the numbers advantage as well. Joe um, Yak is keeping himself alive, pushing out from Kitchen, and with just soldiers left, soldiers never do well on these kind of post-fight situations with no health. It's a wipe. 
beta. Ooh, Domo with the salty bind. That's the dumbest bind I've ever seen. Don't care six points. That is that just tells me <laughs> I'm insecure. That's <laughs> that's not a good bind, man. <laughs> it doesn't cut away what you think it does. Uh, anyway, look at where Lucas is. That's that's very weird positioning. That, that I'm pretty sure ETFO used to ban people for these kind of spots, right? Like he's just oh, floating up there. Edge bugs, I get you. Yeah, oh, no, he's on the lights, my man. He's on the lights. That counts. But he's bicycling midair, so that means he's definitely bugging somehow. That's, anyway. a, that's a map issue. That's a map issue. We got point, people. People on the point, and the stickies have... Uh, I, where are the stickies for the point? Everybody is just kind of backing off over on Stevie Wonder's aim school. They've got a lot more on their plate to deal with than they had hoped with this heavy weapons guy just sat there just being a sort of meaty presence to deal and oh it's it was going so well so much pressure on the initial oh, point that's tragic scar was on 7 hp didn't get an arrow gets chipped down by a scout not what you want to see and oh yak even in too deep this is a this is probably the, the biggest uh, like major mistake that i've seen out of them where it's just like they're just bleeding players for no reason right now. They have a spy. Hopefully he can do something, but I, I, I don't have too high hope. Hey, all right, here we go, here we go, oh, here we go. Don't he's pretending. So he's, he's, he's trying to pretend he's a scout. Hey, buddy, I'm here to cap with you. Wait a minute, there's only two times on this cap. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Don't was so far forward. He's actually popped already. They they just chasing down this medic. Yeah, he's gonna get uh, beheaded by the executioner. Oh that is Tomaz. Scout getting taken down as well, also by Tomaz. So this could just be like a Tomaz nuke round. Where he oh no, they're him. pushing the other way, and Joseph's only got 25 HP. The bottle, the sword, the bottle wins! And Lucas, he's shaking his head. He knows victory is assured. 5 0. What's the time? I'm actually five minutes late on my prediction, Vita. Well, oh, I didn't me. even give a prediction, but I'm pretty sure I said 20 minutes, right? <laughs> right. What a fucking savant you are. But it's a very, very comfortable win for Witness Gaming EU going in and three points out of six ETF to well. The bind is becoming real here, Vita. Yeah, it's still a bad bind. Sorry. But uh, let, let's take a look at some, some stats here to maybe get a bit. But, I mean, I actually thought that was a pretty decent game out of Stevie Wonder's aim school. Like, I, I feel like they played well. Sui had a good game. I can tell you already before even looking at the stats. He looked good. Yeah, those snipes were clean. There were sort of uh, little plays from the soldiers as well, just defending in the last minute. Overall, a uh, surprising performance coming out from Stevie Wonder's aim school. They're really going to be kicking themselves for that last round, that heartbreaker of a round where they got pushed all the way from the enemy last to their own last. And yeah, the uh, the stats are just as cruel as well. I don't see a red player on the damage stats until a long while, until finally we see T-Ram kind of floating about there. And that was, a, that was some good rocket showmanship throughout the game i wish i could uh, say the same for his buddy scar though but it's i think the mids were probably not great until the post -half i mean they got the... better right like yeah know, they, they started up suiciding two soldiers for domo every time and they got domo but then they lost the mid like without killing anyone else so i really like that they just uh Mixed it up quite a bit, trying to send Soldier into Kitchen, just kind of standing there, playing the flank a bit. Uh, slowing their own bits down just a, a tad. Actually, it worked out really well for them. So, they're, they're showing some good signs here. I, I don't want to discount them already. Uh, I, I, just looking at the stats, Yak is definitely the one that sticks out to me. Going 4 for 11 on Demo Man, having 233 DM, DPM. Like, mm. That's very low, especially for a team that's defending a lot. Usually the defending demo man gets like a bit of a damage boost, but we don't even see that. So yeah. it's very rough for him. His buddy Faust wasn't having a grand game as well. Look at the difference between Domo and Faust. Even though Domo was dying every mid, those seems to be the only deaths on him because I'm pretty sure their overall strategy for Stevie Wonder's aim score was get Domo first and whatever the kills we get in the, in the post fight. Don't want to lose the round. They didn't really care about the mid too much until the soldiers had like a change of gear in those last couple of mids. Yeah, and I mean that's not, that's not a dumb strat. Like we we saw. Oof, I hate I hate that strategy so much. I hate it when teams just kind of five players nuke the, the, <laughs> your medic. I mean, sure, 
yeah, he's dead, but usually that sometimes puts you in a place where your medic is undefended and he gets killed later on. And then when Domo comes back, and we talked about it, he could have gone crits a few times, he's not lost any advantage. So it just kind of puts a delay on things, and yeah. you win mid and you lose second. Like, I actually witnessed gaming at uh, the recent uh, Fallout on LAN, like on Granary. They, they actually just send in Lass and Ash every time to kill the enemy medic. I think it was like against G6 or something. And it was like just every time. <laughs> like that's just the first thing they did. They just jumped in both soldiers, killed the medic instantly. And then they took it from there. So like, mm. it, it can absolutely work. And it, it is hell. Like Granary Mid is really its own kind of beast and personal hell if you get focused on it. Because, yeah. you know, if you think uh, Yak's stats are bad now, just wait until he gets like super duper focused on these mids. Because... That is absolutely a thing they can do. Maybe they decide not to, to bother if he's having a bad game. But I, I kind of like Granary Mid for that reason, that you can absolutely just focus people. And they, they can't yeah. do a whole lot out <laughs> yeah, of just yeah. staying outside of mid, just like staying inside of a ramp room or something. Yeah, it is a skyscraper of a mid as well. People hide and just uh, around these box areas and you don't really know where all these jumps and kind of collapses are coming from. And... It's I, I talked about it a bit on Snake Water, but it's even worse than Granary. The medic will not survive, probably, if an either team in these uh, little mid fights. So it, it would be, you know, there's chances. I think if you maybe just throw enough post bodies and at things and just hope like you take the scrappy fights and make your scouts survive as well. I look like all the fights that they were winning over on Stevie Wonder's aim school, they had scouts and Witness Gaming did not. Real question, of course. Will we see the stock pipes on this mid? Like, yeah. I'm going to get so mad if they don't do it. I mean, you've, you, we've seen so far, uh, Lucas looks like he's overall happy with his Iron Bobber uh, sort of shenanigans. And I think the, the legitimate sort of ability of it, where the, the pipes just can stick to the ground and stuff like that, he's gotten quite a few kills with that compared to the sort of you know, wishy-washy, rolly pipes that go all over the place. Yeah, but, like, surely on this one particular mid, like, having a really overpowered spam angle is worth it, if just for the mid. All right, like, you can switch off after that. I'm not saying run the stock pipes full-time. I'm saying, like, if at any point you want to spam over the... Like, it's just an extra really powerful option that mm. you give yourself. You don't really see mid. too many demos going for those sort of switching weapons per situation there used to be a thing a while ago with the uh, the other sticky launcher what was it quickie launcher where it had obviously you could destroy stickies and all this stuff like that but uh, you don't really see too much of those crazy little strategies or adaptations in the, uh, in the middle of the game especially because your devil man's usually not dying too much unless you're yak <laughs> yeah all right so i'm kind of wondering like do you like the uh bomb the medic strat on this mid like do, do you think that's uh, a... it's granary you kind of it's it's usually you kind of accept as both teams that your medic's gonna go down because <laughs> yeah, one, one player can kind of get on top of the medic so easily and you're so compartment and like fragmented from your own medic trying to get in and over the other side that you have to kind of leave your medic alone with uh, like one person or nobody so it's it's a fact of life but what isn't a fact of life is a bit of a slow rollout. Slow rollouts get punished here. There's a sticky trap on the... Uh, oh, it was a half a second too slow on Lucas. Otherwise, I think he would have got the kill onto Yak. That would have been a demoralizing mid. But Lucas actually opted to stay on top of the box and kind of defend things from here. Pappy going high pie in the sky and trying to just lay down any sort of carpet bombs. And the collapse is so much stronger. Oh. They're crawling all over them. They go for the medic. The medic doesn't even die on mid beater. That was the worst double sortie bomb onto a medic I've ever seen. <laughs> like, that was just... Both soldiers came in, like, very stuttered after each other. And then, okay, Poppy is in deep, that's for sure. <laughs> Here comes the Uber, he gets saved. He moves in deep as well. But, like, they were just not even close to Domo. And they just kept shooting at Domo anyway, even though there was, like, four players in the way. Second hasn't been been capped yet. This kind of feels like bullying, but it is not really worth it. They, they need to have a scout on the point. Scar did a wonderful job of actually killing that scout on the point. What a massive wrench in the works of 
uh, Witness Gaming EU. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure they would have had that. They had both doors on lockdown. They took down the Sentry Gun. It was really an optimistic Sentry Gun, but still, because nobody really pushes uh, that quickly on Grenade, because situations like that might arise. Demol, fantastic bomb, a really hard place to get on top of the Medic, but he does manage to make it look so easy. So with the Medic down, they've got the heal advantage here. They don't even need to wait for the Stinking Uber, so the spams start to plenty. The Classies start oh, flowing. Classy. Somehow, he's on last. He's yeah, he bring his body. way in there. And he's still relatively healthy. He's going to get a crossbow. Pappy goes in. He sees a bunch of weak players, and uh, it's just easy pickings for the lad. They've even got an Uber to celebrate uh, all of these bodies going down. And throughout all of this, Faust comes out to respawn. Hey, guys, what's going on? Oh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, just immediately met with the the iron fist of the top team in ETF 12. Not not a not a pleasant situation to be in, but you, you don't really have a choice. Right? You can't just cower in, in spawn. That will get you insta kicked. <laughs> All right. Well, that first mid, that first round, uh, it's just a warm up round again. Light snake water. We just need to get our blood flowing, get back into it. Lucas, very low uh, starting off this mid. There is a sticky go kind of uh, peppering near that health pack. What doesn't get them? And oh, imagine if, if you could have spammed over. Pappy. <laughs> He's on top of the medic. It's your favorite play. He gets the medic play now, and now everyone just needs to protect around Domo, become the blob, and go for these little skirmishes where they can. And they're seeing sort of the name power here of Witness Gaming EU. I don't think I see anybody losing a skirmish. No, that was uh, another really solid mid. Like, Domo playing super passive in the, the corner ish is really working out. Like, you have to be very careful standing in, in that kind of positioning usually but it really works out because his scouts are so good at just zoning out the soldiers jumping for him so it's going to be another uber ad here coming in on to last they're taking it kind of slow giving it a time for the center gun to potentially go up a little bit but i mean it's still level one i, I expect lucas to just come screaming in here through the air very soon uh, no screaming about it. He's taking his uh, patient one step and takes out the sentry gun, literally splits, and he's got some stickies already on some doorways trying to stop these players from peppering in. I don't really see anybody standing on the point though. Maybe that's because Yak is uh, trying to put whatever sticky he has on that point, but will get cleaned up. There's just one man against the world, and the world won't even kill him. It's 2 0. <laughs> oh, Domo walked into a roller. Now his perfect game is ruined. Too bad, brother. <laughs> Domo was not happy about it. Should, should have spammed your. Uh, I say, where's the bind? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Six points. For, yeah, yeah. That would be a perfect time for the. I'm not salty. You're salty. Shut up. I'm not sad. You're sad. Fine. But anyway, we've got another rollout here. Lucas, <laughs> again, he's so close to getting him, man. Lucas, he doesn't even uh, go for his own health pack. He just wants to go in and hopefully get the suicide kill onto Joseph. And uh, young Yak will still be alive. Get some sort of healing. He lays down the groundworks on these scouts to maybe let his team come in and start collapsing. But they're too busy dealing with Pappy. Now they can go in and start trying to kill and... Uh, destroy that medic. The medic goes down, everybody's lacking a bit of heals and everyone's darting their eyes all over the place. Where are they? They're all in the ramp room, enemy ramp room to be uh, in, in fact. And Lucas is just too low Classy now to, to keep be a hero. Him. There's no way. One HP warrior, he will go down. Uh, Devil Man goes in as well at the same time. It's a brave effort, but it is actually going the way of Stevie Wonder's aim score. Very nice clean up and control of Pappy there. Yeah, they decided not to go for the medic. It's kind of what we saw the last map as well, where they just decided to stop going for for Domo. He's just too slippery, too hard to get Ooh, to, I guess. Thomas, they've bad. Oh, he actually gets the snipe anyway. And he goes, shoots the one un un ubered player. Oh, no! Oh. Yeah, he goes down as well to the heavy weapons and the uh, people of... Uh, and yeah, oh, sweet, trying to just see if they can just cap the point right under their noses. Tomas pivotal in that. Imagine an extra scout during that push beater. Yeah, like the scout was so pivotal. Obviously, it's a bunch of damage and stuff, but also you can't use the speed boost to get to the demo and save him. So it was like actually two picks in one that they just got Ooh. there. But uh, yeah, Yak, he's holding the door. He's holding the line for his boys, and he will go down for the boys. But uh, that's a medic Uber down. So maybe a headache now for not so much of a headache later. They've got Faust. Building whatever it is. Is that a back cap on Granary? I, I love it. It's sweet. Uh, sweet. Why have sweet? Okay, well, I guess he, he knew players were going to come back for him and he thought it's better just to keep go 
deeper, deeper, and One just be a two more bothersome. He's he's making an embarrassing poor Pappy. Oh, it's, woe is the life of a soldier fighting a scout on high ground. Yeah, it's it's almost one of those situations where he was like, he should have just had the shotgun, man. Oh. <laughs> just walk out of spot with the They're shotgun. Pushing through yard, they've got Uber advantage. They can just keep pushing for it. There's somebody collapsing from behind them though. Oh, That's Demol. Yeah. Oh, almost got piped out of the air, but I guess scatter shot instead. They still got an Uber charge. I don't know what they're waiting for. They have got this advantage and really can scare and collapse on them by going all the way to the left. Now they pop. They pop, but they've got Domo's Uber now. They respond in kind. Uh, I think uh, Scar's Manu still behind me. lines here, but he's kind of in alone. He needs a lot of help to get this. He actually does manage to get the rest of his team in there. It's a very aggressive play, but you don't really see the kills come in. It is a, a cap out here, but it's not really a man advantage that it could have been. Ooh. Slightly better collapse here, and this would have worked two. out. 2v2 combat classes and they just don't want to go for it. Joseph uh, Yakel is not feeling himself and he will just back out and probably for the wise because there were going to be respawners. Yeah, I, I don't think they knew exactly when the respawners were going to come in, but they knew it was like a matter of like five to two seconds and it was actually like on the higher end there it was five seconds. So they could potentially have done it if they just had really good focus fire. But I mean, I'm pretty sure Yak wasn't fully reloaded and it is a really big <laughs> chance to take because when you're only three players alive and you don't have two combat classes, you don't really have a high DPM output, so fights tend to last pretty long. So it's very difficult to, to get the, the kills that you need in that time. Oh my god, Yak almost gets taken down. He does get taken down. Overextend. Domo gets sent in the skybox, but holds on to the Uber once again. That was a three-man sack it ends up with him. This might just be a recap coming out here for Witness Gaming. Poor Classy, he just moved his sentry gun when everybody decided to jump in as well. That's just Occam's razor for you. Oh, they actually get forced, or is that like a, a preemptive pop hoping to get aggressive here? But Scar is just one slow soldier man. He actually gets uh, killed off by some uh, sneaky traps from Lucas. They're all peppered behind him and will go down despite his Uber going off. Yes, Sui has snuck his way behind lines, decides not to show himself. Uh, okay, he is going to join him there to try and take down Classy, but oh, Dimu was still back there as well, so the flank didn't work at all. Now we're just going to have to back out of mid of as well. Vanu somehow takes down Lucas. I kind of feel like that was a dumb fight to take, but Vanu showing some really good aim there, taking him down, but they can oh, get overwhelmed okay. very quickly. And yeah, they're actually just going to Uber in onto them. And, oh, Thomas actually goes down. That's really big. So not quite working out the way they wanted to, and they still haven't capped mid. So the forward spawn is actually going to come in here and help in this fight as well. So a bit of a mess up here coming out for Witness Gaming. I don't think they're going to get punished that severely, but they definitely could be. These sorts of Ubers feel stronger on other maps, but weaker on Granary, just because you've got like shutter doors, sort of little doorways that you can uh, just bunker in and really uh, just back out and just not deal with these Ubers whatsoever. And it's happened to both teams, I feel like now. So I don't know why Witness Gaming would have followed in suit in that strategy. They're going to take the messy skirmishes instead and really just play off the fact that they've got the respawners a bit more on their side of this map than uh, Stevie Wonder's aim school. Yak, the boy's on his own. He could set up traps, but uh, could overextend himself as well. They spot him, but yeah. they don't want to dare go ahead against these traps. He tried to blind at the medic there, but as it turns out, he's not wall hacking. Uh, doesn't get it. <laughs> he just kind of guessed. Guess it's the timing there. Always oh, the game from top for three. They know though. They know that they're pushing from top. They pop in the Uber. This is a very nice, strong Uber on top of the medic. Uh, uh, Uber has been taken out of the equation for Stevie Wonder's aim school. They even got a bit of post Uber to deal with a few of this flank players uh, kind of left behind. And now they just have to kind of play off what sort of picks they have. They are focusing firing in all the right places, and there's just no bodies left to deal with this last push. It's three now. Oh, you love to see it. That was like right out of the Epsilon playbook. Uh, the only difference was that, that the Epsilon would do like two soldiers, but obviously you don't do that anymore. You want to run fast with the scout. So it was a scout soldier wrap around up top before you even capture out second. And it's a really old push, and it worked out really well for them. They're like when you get onto the medic like that, but because you're not spotted, it really kicks ass. And I, I love to see these kind of old school plays coming back. Oh, just working out. Yak, he's just gone for the uh, the the slow slower rollout play. The uh, 
just from the uh, sort of ramp room instead, really keeping Lucas on his toes. And with Lucas going down, really uh, hell bent trying to find that demo man and that early damage. The the dominoes are falling away of Stevie Wonder's aim school, and yeah, it goes to show how pivotal a demo man can be in these fights. Yeah, Domo wasn't really healing anyone for like quite a while that mid as well. He was just desperately running around trying to avoid damage, and he did do that, but everyone else around him just died. So again, Witness Gaming kind of struggling on these mids. I think they lost the last one as well. Now they're going to have to set up Ooh. here last. Uber Advance is going to come in here being used. Yak jumping in as Yak likes to do. Dimul going down pretty weak, but Yak goes down, unable to be saved. Bit of an overextension here. Unfortunately, Sui hasn't capped it out yet. But a, a valiant effort. I, I think they, they kind of needed to pop in that early, even though they couldn't put pressure on the point. So, they, you know, it was either have even Ubers but all your players, or have one player down who need to cap, or have an Uber add. And they, they chose the Uber add, and I like that decision. It just didn't work out. Uh, what I have against the Ak and these bombs is you will jump in initially, but everybody's so buffed up over on Witness Gaming EU in the little spawn door area. He laid down all the stickies he could, and he couldn't even kill a buff sniper, man. Yeah, it's rough, and also then the medic doesn't quite get to him in time, so he needs to jump in a little... Sh a little less far, yeah. <laughs> Not quite working out for him. A small Uber ad here on Domo as well, but it is very small, so I, I think Faust's gonna be just fine here. You can see him, he's running forward now. There's actually two stickies behind him. I don't think he's been, he's really spotted them. Like, Lucas is being very sneaky and a lot of pressure coming in here. Just taking players down on the flank, and here comes the Uber exchange. But they've already lost so many players on Stevie Wonder's aim score. Uh, at this point, it's just a matter of can they get out of time. It looks like Faust will manage to do so, but oh man, his demo man getting gunned down, not going to make it easy for him. Damn, it's just like one small fish eating one slightly, uh, well, eating no fish, and then the bigger fish is coming by <laughs> one by Faust one. Wins against Tomas. Ooh, oh, it will go down to the uh, to the competing crossbow of Domo. I was just talking about how everybody just seems to be picking off each other like a domino effect. One fish eats the other fish and eats the other fish and eats the other fish. Yeah, it's a, it's a fish eat fish world out there. So they uh, have well, once again an Uber ad. It is an Uber, not a crits. And they just need to t <laughs> to hold this without losing anyone. Poppy actually going down very weak. Actually, it is going to go down. This is a really annoying loss here for them. As they, they are going to have to push on this Uber ad, right? Like, there's just no way you can hold. Sui's uh, been, been annoying as well. He's actually kicking them out of their uh, And Tyrion's <laughs> also going behind to drop down. I don't think anyone's actually watching it. No one is. So Tyrion's behind as well. So this could get very dicey. Oh, dope. It's the Epsilon, well, the new modern Epsilon play. Oh my god, there's Uber. It's bouncing them perfectly. They're on top of one, two, three. And they even get a fourth player on the flank somewhere. And Sui is left confused. Like, I'm sure it just went off to go switch from Sniper. And everybody's dead. Yeah. Like, uh, some players wrapped around behind, but before they could ever get there... Oh, there's actually a sentry on the right side. Never got killed. That's funny. He just stood there looking sad after the round ended. you got to respect your Uber advantages, boys and girls. Those are the sort of uh, Ubers that come out if you just kind of overextend yourself like that. So, Lucas Stank, he's, uh, he must have heard what you said, Beta, because I feel like he's been having pretty decent mid so far, if we discount the last one. Yeah, we... Don't count the most recent one. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing well. If you anyway. could look at the data I, I ignore, then yes, yes, it will all work yeah. out. Papi oh. right on top of Faust this time. He actually brings his buddy Demol into the fight as well, so it's a guaranteed medic death, but this is what I'm talking about. They get the medic, but at what cost? There's so many more players for Stevie Wonder's aim score. Lucas, the last one alive, and I mean, this will be a YouTube clip and a half if we manage to kill everybody here now. 2, 2 HP, HP, no problem. Oh, only problem is that he dies to literally anything. So, there you go. He actually ran behind lines, I think. <laughs> I don't know. He kind of delayed his death for no reason, but... Oh, well. Ooh, crits. A crits coming out from Faust. Uh, there you go. Your wishes came true, Beta. Some crazy plays, something that they probably won't expect. And Yak does love a crits uh, in his gameplay, so... Let's see if he can make magic happen, but there are times where this crit usually goes 
a lot more against your own team than it is the enemy team. Is it just yeah. is the green light or should I say the yellow light to just jump on the medic? Yeah, Yak is the owner of the one of the fattest crits of all time. Like it was, he was like twenty damage away from getting a, a six kill with like two stickies. Oh, here we go, first sticky. It finds Ooh. Tomas, but uh, they're too deep into the bunker. Domo is going to try and find the most isolated spot he can. Oh, shame there's just not enough left in the tank because I think he had his eyes on Domo for half a second there for Yak. Yeah, Tim kind of caught in there, kind of get taken down by Poppy. Might get cleaned Sweet. up as well. Yeah, Sweet just barrels in there. He knew that Poppy was kind of weak. Didn't need much damage. And Sweet actually in on last as well. Trying to get onto the move. Oh, misses a few Man. shots there. Unfortunate, but... Uh... Man, that was that was like a fucking banny clip for a second there. Some Steves could have been shouted out. Who pushes on that kind of health, Sweet? But uh, it's the alternative timeline. Will go down and uh, Yak goes down somewhere. Is that Demol up to... That? What? Oh, there's a sneaky scout in the corner. Waits to get the, the two shot onto medic. Gets all oh, he's so weak. Oh, eight HP. Eight, 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 eight. actually pops. I mean, credit to him. That is a very scary digit to be on. So mission accomplished for the scouts. They're hiding in these random corners, and it's not hard. I mean, well, it's very hard for the scouts to actually get a shot in on top of the medic, just because there's so oh, many bodies in the, in the way. Flank. He's behind line. Oh, another crit. Crit. Go another for crits. It. Who? Who would have protect another crits? Oh, he sees the medic! He gets one sticky, he doesn't quite find the other. He needs to use a bit of stickies, and he just takes the scout taxi out! He can't get the Domo! The laser beams can't find him either! Scar will get them instead, but Pappy's going to trade over on the second point. They were so scared of this Devilman crits, they just went into any old fire of Stevie Wonder's <laughs> aim school. Oh, uh, Demo will spot him. I think he's going to go for like the sky box bomb. Oh, oh nice. times it perfectly. Oh my god, he might clean up another player as well. He gets it. Could he get the health pack? He just misses him, sadly. But, oh. Uh... Yeah, Lucas was there to clean up for him. So, basically a three kill bomb there by, by Demo. Just saw them, timed it out perfectly. Just knew how fast they were going to run. And just took them down in a choke. So now... They can just push in here really cleanly. There All shouldn't right. be anyone forward. Like, they know there's no demo man, so no reason to just take for stickies. Sweet is actually Ooh. behind. He somehow managed to do it again. Comes in, tries to two shot the scout, but okay, somehow Classy just turns around and two shots him instead. Okay, Classy. I, I guess you're still good in this game. Uh, they might decide to wait for the Uber here. They are on 80%. Uh, <laughs> just standing in the window against the sniper. All right, sniper actually switched off. But this is looking like it's going to be the final push here. If they do it right here on Witness Gaming, they can take another 5-0, just like we predicted. Yeah, uh, I think they've got inspired a bit too much by this corner gameplay, all these uh, surprise shenanigans on um, Stevie Wonder's aim school. They're just uh, all dying to random places, trying to go for these hero plays. The Uber comes out, they fight, isolate the medic, he gets killed, and they all collapse on one place. They go reload and reset now, and the only person alive on the other half of the map is the demo man. And well, Swee's there as well, but he's just as easily isolated. Yak can't really help him out because he just he has to die for the point. He has to put his stickies on the point, and he will lose the point. Five nil to Witness Gaming EU. Very clean and, and yeah, same time as well. Twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah, so just very consistent play out of them. Their mids were kind of an issue. They, they were losing those, so that's definitely something to work on for them. So yeah, it's kind of what you want to see, right? Like uh, you win safely, but you also have some things that uh, some weaknesses that you get pinpointed that you can actually work on in scrims. So yeah. overall, fantastic result here. And hey. Do you want the same school? Not a bad showing either. They they had some really good uh, good moments in this game, like at least individually, and they just need to make sure that they can also get some good team moments going on for them as well. Because this second map, they definitely look pretty scatterbrained. They were just all over the place sometimes, where it just looked like a bunch of six random people going for individual plays one at a time, and eh, that might be the case because that's what new teams tend to look like. So as they kind of play themselves together and get a real roster going. I expect them to, to start being more coordinated. You know, it mm. doesn't help that uh, they're playing as literally the best <laughs> team in the league. So you'll look kind of bad no matter what you do, right? Yeah, the meds were great though. That's uh, obviously something they should be holding their head up high. The, the, it is a conundrum about Stevie Wonder's aim score because when you talk about them, you talk about Yak and his unique gameplay 
and they either live or die by this unique gameplay. They either it it goes well and it looks like fantastic, you know, kind of drunken kung fu demo man, amazing gameplay. Or there's times where you just see, obviously, Yak dying during his own Uber advantage, you know, straight away, and then like they get heartbroken round all the way, push back to last, and lose the round. It's just I don't know what you really do in these scenarios because it is a really a style that is like built around him and he's not going to change I think anytime soon and I don't know how you can really approve upon it until the day that Yak goes alright I'm going to just change up a bit or pay a bit more reserved yeah like uh, I really feel like a lot of these uh, deaths that he had he could have survived if there was just a bit more refinement in like how deep he went in like if you did the same thing that he's basically doing but just a little less extreme, I kind of feel like it will work out for him. So maybe it's just a bit of uh, of tinkering with the, how aggressive some of these jumps are, because it really felt to me like it was just very often the medic was unable to get to him in time to save him. And like that, that's at least something you can fix, right? Like, like that's not necessarily a bad decision. It's just a good idea executed poorly or not good enough. Hmm. Right? And, and then you get punished for it. So you know, not, I didn't see too many weird, oh, I'll just bomb for the sake of it, LOL kind of situation. But, I suppose. I, mean, I guess it's more like you see the flavors of it during pushes and yeah. maybe like the philosophies of like during holds as well. He's a very aggro player and I don't want to take away from somebody's like style and something that's obviously led him to his success to this point in his career. You know, he got this high and doing being Yak, you know, as he is. But it's just really hard. I think at some point, where does the ceiling begin for this? Is it does it ever? Is it showing its head now, or is there still more in the tank for Yak to improve upon with these things? Can he really have it all and play? Keep continuing to play the way he wants to play. Yeah, only time will tell. Um, it's going to be more interesting when he plays like more evenly matched teams. I'm kind of I'm going to look up when. Who they're playing it, next? Like uh, I think a good example as well. Do you remember like old Kado? You know the jump in Kado, the fucking yeah. two sticky bomb Kado, and all this stuff. Yeah, you see some clips on YouTube every uh, every now and then, all this stuff like that. But that is an example of he did reel in a lot of that stuff for the greater good of a lot of his teams. I don't think he was obviously jumping in as much as he used to when he was, you know, hitting going into prem. I swear this. that's the the development of every single good. English demo man I've ever seen. Like first it was Numlock, then it was Cadiz, then it was War. Right? <laughs> right? Like it just happens to every single English demo man. They jump too much, man. Like all of them. And then as they get better and better and get on better, better teams, they just kind of rein it in and do it very sparingly or like in really good situations where it makes sense. Hmm. Anyway, I I I realize how much I've been talking about uh Poor Yak and his little style and all this stuff, but uh, he really is an interesting player to talk about. So uh, where I don't want to say I'm on any sort of hit group. It's a very interesting conundrum. That is all. Yeah. But I will big... also say all the the top like damage dealers are the new additions. So hey, they're, they're pulling their weight already. That, that's good, right? Mm. That's uh, especially against such an impressive team as well. Yeah, yeah. Like like we knew it wasn't going to be close, and it's fine. <laughs> that, that's completely fine but yeah it was just a bump in the road here for witness gaming they just uh, they they didn't get cursed by the organization or something because we did also just see witness gaming kind of underperform at land so you know maybe witness gaming is just cursed <laughs> uh, <laughs> the turns out nah that's not really how reality works but you know good to see all right that's it, Beta. We've made it. We've come out of the other end, and we've came out with some time to spare, really. A kind of quick evening of TF2, but uh, it's always nice to get some in bite-sized chunks, but uh, obviously, congratulations. Six fat points, doesn't matter. Binds confirmed for Witness Gaming EU. Stevie Wonder's aim score uh, just continuing the grind of this ETF to all season, but uh, can only go up from here as 
we are going to end our coverage of week four and another bright week ahead of us, week five coming up. If you want to follow all of that action with me, Toro Taz, Beta on the co cast for some of them, and uh, we too will probably not be around, but he was around for this game as well. And you can find all of that over on teamfortress.tv. And uh, also a big shout out to Copenhagen Games as well for sponsoring our ETF to World 41st season. Anything to touch upon, Vita, before we go? Yeah, there's rentals for land now for Copenhagen Games. That, that really makes it. I mean, it's not official, but it, it looks like there's going to be a solution. So that, that's very, very promising. It was like the really the big thing that was holding the land back, I think. So mm. we were doing good. We're doing well. This season is looking really good with the, a bunch of really strong teams. Like even after Witness Gaming folded and had the... And plus, you, you know, yeah. just because that team folded doesn't mean you won't see those players again. They, they always congregate and they come around. They might have some whispers in the winds and try and get their way onto some of these rosters. Who knows? There's dark horses uh, being bred here in the sort of kind of back lines of this season. Otherwise, if you want to Tune into all that action and see what's going on with anything else happening in the future. Go over to teamfortress.tv. Otherwise, give us a follow on, on all the other kind of sites that we're on. You know the sites. I'm not going to plug them. You know them. All right. Let's end this. Beta, it's time to go. Bye-bye now. Get some sleep. Good night.